people of the internet, my name is Mia Cotton, and welcome back to Seduce Me the Atome. On the last episode, we met a very, a very fun succubus named Diana who promised to ruin our life if we didn't, you know, have the demon boys go back home to marry her for power and stuff. So, you know, we're in a very fun situation. You know, I, I, I've never... I, I don't th I didn't want to be a part of a love triangle at the beginning of this, especially, like, one of the... Like, not one of the- I didn't like not being the center point of the love triangle. I mean, love triangles in general are just not fun, but, um, I don't like being a part of this part of the love triangle. It sucks, and I want it to stop, so Diana's got to go. She's got to go. Alright. Without another word, a deep purple pentagram appeared under her feet, and Diana's body slowly sank into the floor. As her head vanished into the floor, the pentagram vanished. At once, the boys relaxed and slowly began to return to their spots at the table, each in deep thought. You know, just their returning to their usual spots in the lineup. <laughs> She'll be back, but she won't kill us. She needs us alive. Yeah, she might kill me, though. Whatever. So we'll just keep saying no. She can't force us to come back. Exactly. Consent is important, kids. She can't do anything but annoy us. Eventually, she'll give up. She might kill me, though. She might kill me, though. That's the hope, anyway. I am still here. Hopefully. Damien. Damien walked over to me and stood before me, looking at me with concern. We'll protect you. Don't worry. Damien! I nodded, feeling that he was telling the truth, or at least hopeful and, or for at least hopeful and comforting thought. Or at least a hopeful and comforting thought. Huh. Can't read. Damien gently took my hand in his and brought it up to kiss my knuckles. However, making me blush and forget what I was thinking about. The sound of collective chuckles and playful snickers whispered through the air, making me blush even more, but as Damien sighed and cleared his throat, the laughter stopped. I looked up to see as I looked up to see who was glaring at his brothers with his lips on my hand. He and I pulled away from each other just as the sound of Naomi's car appeared. I quickly ate my food, waved to the boys, and left, confident that nothing was going to happen. Never ever say that nothing will happen before the day is over. Cause you know, then people will just show up and ruin your goddamn day. And this has been life advice from Mia. <laughs> I avoided talking about the ride back home yesterday, saying that the ride was a one time thing. I'll be riding with you guys from now on to and from school. The girls seemed happy. We entered the school, quickly gathered our things from our lockers and headed to class. There were no events to our surprise. History wasn't exactly fun, but our teacher was great. At least he would have been great if he was in class that day. Naomi and Suzu took their seats around me. Suzu in front of me, Naomi behind me. Before the class bell rang and the class was greeted by the dean. Students, you'll be having a substitute for class today. Oh no. Everyone meet oh. Miss Diana. God damn it! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> what, she didn't even change clothes? This is super inappropriate to wear at a school! There are children here! God! My heart stopped. At the door with the Dean was Diana. So many Ds. <laughs> Triple Ds, in fact. God, I'm, I am 12. Looking over the students and smirking as her eyes landed on me, she strutted to the teacher's desk, ignoring or welcoming the whispers from the other students before sitting on the wood and crossing her legs. <laughs> sitting on the wood. Thank you, Dean. You can go now. Okay. With a wave of Diana's hand, the dean left the classroom, closed the door, and left the area. Diana smiled at us, making my stomach turn. What was she going to do? Was she going to teach us a really boring part of history or recite factually inaccurate facts? What? That turned out better in my head. Historical inaccuracies. That's the point I was getting at, and it didn't go anywhere. So, history. History, history, history. Such a silly thing, isn't it? Physics, 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 I mean, physics. What do we care about the past? We're in the present. Okay. The rest of the class, including Naomi and Suzu, hesitantly nodded in agreement, unsure about this new teacher, but willing to listen to more of what she had to say. The present is so full of wonderful things. Okay. While the labors of the past are the reason we have many things, it is our chance and privilege to utilize what has been given to us. I mean, that's a that's that's a fair statement. Where are you going with this? Her charm was almost infectious. The class was practically starting to eat out of her hand. 
Ew. I looked around to see classmates grinning and agreeing with Diana. I pressed my lips together as I listened further. I had no choice. What's even funnier about human beings is that some of the bits of history we hear as either made up or completely biased to one side. It's like a story you read as a child. I mean... Yeah. You hear of the princess and the prince, and they live happily ever after. But what about the family she left behind? What of her friends? Okay, this is just turning into a fun threat. The students listened and agreed intently to her words. I could tell, however, that these words were all targeted at me, because you are a passive-aggressive bitch. The original story of the Little Mermaid. Yep. A perfect example of biased opinion. Yep. Here we have a girl who thinks she can be with this prince... But this prince has to marry a princess. What yep. would happen if the mermaid had her way? What makes the mermaid so important that the princess has to suffer the consequences? Okay, that's not the point of the story. Shut up. I mean... Screw it, I'm challenging her. I'm, I'm sick of her shit. It doesn't matter what happens to the princess. The rest of the class quickly turned their heads to me. Naomi and Suzu looked at me with equally surprised looks. I kept my eyes to Diana. If I was the mermaid, I wasn't going to let the princess take my prince away. Ugh, I didn't like that. Diana stared at me before smiling and turning her body to fully face me. Oh, and why does it not matter? Because fuck you, that's why. The story isn't about the princess. The story is about the mermaid and the prince. Ah, uh, but that is exactly my point. While the story talks about the mermaid and the prince's romance, we don't see the problems of the kingdom the prince rules. While we are all fixated with this love story, we ignore the fact the kingdom would fall apart without the marriage between the prince and princess. She kept her eyes to me as she spoke. I knew she wanted to make her words stick in my mind, but I didn't listen, because fuck you. It was <laughs> it was one thing to be a fictional story, it was another to try it and ruin someone's life for selfishness. Diana chuckled and looked back to the class. Well, luckily in the real story of the Little Mermaid, the mermaid knows that what she was doing was wrong, and she threw herself into the ocean. That's turning into <sighs> sea foam. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. I mean, it's kind of what happened, but, like, she didn't do it because of the entire, like, socio-political thing. She did it because, like, her parents told her that if she wanted to return to the sea, she would have to kill the prince and his wife. And she didn't want to murder anybody. So then she, like, threw herself into the sea, and... But the thing is, like, she didn't turn to sea foam. I think in the original story, she, like, thought she was going to turn to sea foam, but then she, like, gained a soul or whatever and was able to, like become like a, a cherub with, with angel wings or something. I don't know. But like, you're missing the point. Anyway, some of the students that surrounded me mumbled in surprise, obviously not knowing the real story. However, Diana was wrong once again. That's not true. Once again, the class looked to me and Diana faced me with another smile. Not true. How so? The trade-off of becoming... The trade-off for becoming human was marrying the prince or turning into sea foam. However, she was also given the God damn it. Hang on, I dropped a thing. However, she was also given the choice to kill the prince and turn back into a mermaid. The mermaid didn't choose because she loved him and sacrificed herself for that love. This is a story worth telling, not some princess getting her way, but of a tragedy that had befallen a girl who only wanted love. The class applauded me, and then everybody clapped, <laughs> with Suzu giving me her usual punch to my shoulder and Naomi smiling at my logic. Diana, however, finally grew an almost angered face at me. Interesting. So what you are saying is that the princess should be given no mind. Yeah. The story is not about the princess. The story is about the mermaid, and the mermaid should have gotten her prince. Even at the risk of a kingdom falling apart? I mean, there's other ways that the kingdom could have been saved. If the entire world- even if the entire world fell apart around them, duty does not overrule love and the princess needs to realize that- Well, um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, but also, okay. The applause that followed that in- the, the applause that followed that intensified with whoops and hollers. I felt a wave of confidence roll through my body. Diana wasn't going to win. I wasn't going to let her. 
Diana then stopped talking and looked at the clock on the wall, reading it quickly. This class had hardly begun. Why was she looking at the time? Diana then leaned against the blackboard and smiled to us. I became worried. You know what? School isn't important. Everyone, go ahead and head home. Take the week off. I don't think you have the authority to do that. The student suddenly began to chat happily or in confusion of the, of the situation. Many thought it was a dream come true. Others knew better. Before anyone could protest, however, Diana pressed a finger to her lips and counted down with her fingers in the air. Three, two, one. The speakers of the classroom gently awoke, giving us an announcement we would never believe. Attention students, due to an emergency faculty meeting, we will be closing school for the remainder of the day and this entire week. Please leave the school quickly and quietly and have a good rest of the week. Uh, that's, mm, that's concerning. I don't like that at all. She used her powers on them. Damn it! I felt the need to stop her, but how could I stop a demon in the middle of a public area? Diana smiled before gesturing to the door. Have a nice week off. School will resume next week. Cool! I'm leaving! Bye! Many of the students filed out, chatting to each other about new impromptu plans. Suzu was beyond happy, but Naomi was hesitant. Before we could pack up and leave, however, Diana stepped to us. God. Excuse me, little miss. I'd like you to stay a little while. There's something we need to discuss. I don't like you. At least not in this timeline. You're you're cooler in the first time that I played this game. <laughs> oh yeah, I mentioned it in the last episode, but she was the first person that I that I romanced the first time that I played this game. <laughs> Why are you snapping? As Diana looked to Suzu and Naomi, she snapped her fingers, making my friends tense up. You two can head home. Don't worry about your friend until next week, okay? If you contact her, she won't reply, so don't bother. If she contacts you, ignore her. Uh because she's just fine. Oh my god. Oh my god, you are actually insane. It, as, as if on command, Suzu and Naomi left the room. I tried to march after them, but Diana stepped in my path, warning me with her eyes that if I followed, there would be hell to pay. I had lost my two friends, at least for the week. Diana and I were alone, just like she wanted. Hey. Nope, not, nope, Mia, stop it. I slammed my hands on the desk in front of me and glared at Diana. What are you doing, and what are you thinking? What? Do I not make a good teacher? I figured you should have a little lesson, so I took matters into my own hands. God damn it. Whatever you're trying to do won't work. You really think so, dear? Yeah. And what makes you so sure about that? Because I'm honing magical demon powers, and it's going to be basically five against one. Or six against one, technically. What, what was making me so sure? Why was I confident? Were the boys worth this? My thoughts began to fill with doubt. All the uncertainties about this whole ordeal began to cloud my mind. Ugh. The boys were... If the boys were ever found out, there would be hell to pay. Was it worth it? What about Diana? What would she do to me? Would she make my parents forget about me completely? Would she ruin my friends' lives out of spite? In my gut, I felt the stone of confidence try to fight back. But the heaviness of my thoughts began to dissolve that stone little by little. What was she, what was going on with me? I looked at Diana once again to see her gaze boring into my eyes. She was using her powers on me. This time I was away from home so I couldn't escape. Or could I? Did I want to? The way she stared at me made me feel warm and fuzzy inside my chest. I felt like melting. Hot. Diana lifted a hand under my ch Oh no. Diana lifted a hand under my chin and ran her thumb over my lips, licking her own. Oh god. I felt- I could feel little shots of energy zipping from under my skin into my chin where she held me. Now, let's have a little taste of that sweet, original uh, sexual uh, energy. Okay, that- that- that makes me very uncomfortable. I didn't like that at all. I watched as she leaned in, ready to kiss me and take my energy. Half of my body felt elation at the idea, the other half completely rejected it, and I didn't want her to even touch me! I mean, same. Damien! Suddenly, Diana stopped in her tracks. Damien? Who is... Then it dawned on her. Ah, one of the boys. Why don't you tell me which boy is Damien? No, oh, fuck you! I felt myself nodded and I felt myself nodded in compliance. The youngest. Da and she suddenly appeared! No, like, fade in or anything. Diana giggled in reply before letting go of my face and stepping back. Really? The bastard son with you? Don't, don't, don't be- uh, 
I nodded once again, but this time it was partly of my own my own decision to reply. Diana let out a sound that mimicked a cat's purr before stepping away from me. I thought she said stepping on me. <laughs> that would have been an entirely different situation. All right then. Well, if it's the youngest son you're infatuated with. Oh, dang it. Diana chuckled before kissing my nose, where I felt a shot of energy zap out of my body, almost making me dizzy and recoil. Diana then turned to the desk and sat on the wood, crossing her legs. You can go now. Remember, no class for the rest of the week. I don't like you! I mean, I do, but I don't in this version of the story. And how am I supposed to get home? My two friends le left me here thanks to you. Oh, were they your ride? <laughs> My apologies. Let me help, then. What? Diana then lifted her hand and snapped her fingers. I suddenly felt the floor sink from under me, forcing me to look down. A purple pentagram surrounded my feet, pulling me into the ground. Whoa! Before I could fight, however, I sank fully into the floor, fading into darkness and shutting my eyes. As I opened them, I felt my silk sheets around me, soothing my anxiety from the darkness that had previously surrounded me. W what the? Why did Diana bring me home? Was this an illusion? Was I being tricked? Something was going on. What was happening? Where am I? Ah! I sat up in my bed, looking around me. I was indeed in my room. There was no mistake about that. Why? Diana is too strange. Yep, that's one word for it. <laughs> strange is definitely a thing you could use to describe her. Ugh, excuse me. Was this a game? Was this part of her plan to get the boys back? I was lost and confused more than ever. Despite my logical thought trying to piece the puzzle that is Diana together, the more I tried to solve her- God damn it, I- God damn it, never mind. I skipped the rest of the line. I was interrupted, however, by my door suddenly opening, revealing the boys with Damien's hand on the doorknob. Miss, what are you doing here? Um, well, funny story, um, I fell through a pentagram on the floor. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be in school? Yeah, but, um, then I fell through a pentagram on the floor. I frowned my- I furrowed my eyebrows and stared at Damien, asking him to answer their question through my thoughts. Diana sent her back here. She invaded her school and sent all the students back home. Thank you so much, Damien. You are- you are a, a godsend for people with anxiety. What is that bitch up to? Seriously! Diana's playing around for no reason. Okay. Maybe it's part of her plan. The boys continue to argue back and forth about Diana, fueling an almost jealous curiosity in me. Damien seemed to be too deep with the talking to notice my thoughts, for he didn't even stop talking alongside his brothers. Why was Diana after them? Why did she want to bring them back? What was so important about the boys that she would travel to the human world to get them? What was going on? What's going on? I decided enough was enough. I needed answers. Hey! <laughs> that was so loud. Hey, listen! Hey, hey, listen! one of the very few impressions that I can actually do. The boys stopped arguing, staring at me in surprise. I held my hands and fists on my lap, mut muttering, mustering the courage to continue to speak despite my abrupt shout and my inability to talk, right? Why is Diana here? What is, why does she want to bring him all back? What exactly did you all run from? Why did you run from it? Miss, we- No, don't miss me, please. I need to know what's going on. I won't be left in the dark about this. I want to know what I'm facing. The boys looked at each other hesitantly, unsure of what to reply. Finally, Sam pushed Damien towards the bed, making him buckle and land on his knees with his torso over the edge of the mattress. Damien, do the thing. What? <laughs> thing? What thing? Th what? Sam, you're not suggesting. Why not? She deserves to know everything. Especially if Diana is targeting her. Is it-, it are, are we sharing memories? This is- this is extremely intimate. <laughs> Sam's right. I don't know how I feel I about this. we have no choice then. I was getting confused. I was getting confused. I'm- I've been confused for the last- like, god, what episode am I on now? Eleven, I think. For the last ten episodes. <laughs> I was getting confused. What was Diam- what was- what was Diamian? <laughs> That's a shit name. What was Damien about to do? Damien stood before climbing onto the bed with me, sitting across from me on his knees. We're going to show you everything. You have to trust me, okay? Okay. The minute you stop trusting me, the vision will stop. Okay. Vision? Just trust me. Okay. I looked at Damien, unsure of what was going on, but I nodded. 
if this was the only way to learn, then this is my chance to know. Damien gently placed his hands on each side of my head, gently pressing his thumbs into the skin above my eyebrows. Oh, it's weird. I can like almost feel his hands touching me. I've been playing this game for too long. I could only stare at Damien as his eyes began to glow gold and energy began to be to be both pulled out of me and forced into my head. Within seconds, my vision went black once again. I was unsure of what Damien was doing, but soon shapes and textures slowly began to appear around me. I found myself sitting on a stone floor in the middle of what looked like a fantasy throne room. And that is where we're going to cut off today's episode. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Um, just a quick reminder, I post new videos, new gaming videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific time. If you are interested in watching more of my videos or keeping up to date on the series, you can click the, the, click the subscribe button down below. I'm keeping that in. It's, it's a well-known fact that I cannot read. So again, thank you everybody so much for watching and I will see you next time. Peace.